Okay, welcome back everybody. On this short video, we're going to spend time covering the summary statistics that you will find in the upper left corner of your spreadsheet. So Barry, why don't you walk us through what all those things mean? Okay, TJ. Uh, well, hopefully we won't, <coughs> we won't lose everybody on this part. These are pretty basic summary statistics and everybody should be able to understand them. Okay, we'll go up to the upper left corner. This area in this light green color are our summary statistics. And just for clarification, the summary statistics are for all trades that are being analyzed in the trade log between the start row down here on line 23 of column A and the end row, line 25 of column A. Those are user-specified numbers to change the ability to run some statistics. So once again, these are summary statistics for every trade between line 30 and 787. On the other hand, just to clarify the difference, if we go over here in the basic view that we're in, we go over here to columns uh, V, A, R, A, S, and A, T, these are trade types uh, or session summary. There are statistics in this area too, but these are only statistics between lines 30 and 787, but only of whatever the column is. So some of those columns might not have all the trades in them. In this case, all trades occur under all trades, all trades occur under the day, the week, and the month. So in this case, those are, those will include the same st uh, statistics. Back over here to the left, then I'll just start at the top and walk through them. Uh, we start with the dollars won, dollars lost, and the net, which is just dollars won minus dollars lost. Now notice that the dollars won is highlighted on the left, or, or pushed to the left of the column. The dollars lost is pushed to the right, and the dollars net is in the center. And part of that is a little just a little technique that we use to help your eye, to train your eye to get to the number a whole lot faster. If they were all right justified or center justified in that column, it'd be a little harder to separate the numbers out. So that's just a little technique we use to make them easier to read. So let's go ahead and go down below those. Now we have max dollars one, the average dollars one. Now that again, that's just of the winning trades. So it's the average of the winning trades. Then we have the average of the losing trades in red and the maximum losing trade. And again, if it's a max, it's on the left. If it's a max lost, it's on the right. If it's an average, it's in the center. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. Now, one area that sometimes traders get confused about is when we talk about this ratio, the next one down, called average dollars one and average dollars lost, or I'm sorry, divided by average dollars lost. That is just a ratio of the number average dollars won in line seven divided by average dollars lost in line eight. So you can think of that as being how many dollars did I win for every dollar I lost? You won one dollar and eleven cents for every dollar that you lost. Okay, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Let's go over to column C and D in this area. We just tally up the number of winners, the number of losers, and the number of neutral trades, the ones that were break even or didn't win or lose. Pretty straightforward there. The next two are the percent of winners. So that's obviously taking the number of winners divided by the number of total trades. So you can end up with, in this case, 69%. The number of losers is 29 or about 30%, which is just the number of losers above there divided by the number of total trades. Okay. If you look just to your right, you'll see number of trades as 650. So that's where that total is coming from. And the numbers in columns D, lines 3, 4, and 5 should total up to 650. Let me slide to the right. Uh, I'll do the easier statistics over here. In columns E and F, we have the number of long trades, the number of short trades, and the number of trades. Then we have the percent of long and the percent of short trades. So in this case, there were 350 longs over 650 trades, so that's 52%. And there were 310 shorts divided by 650 total trades, or 40, almost 48% short. 
The next line under that is total points. There were 7,192 points, not dollars, points. It's very important to distinguish between points and dollars. Remember, if we know how many points there are, 7,192, and we multiply that by over here the uh, column H row 1, dollars per point, so that's 10. So 10 times 7,192 is equal to our dollars net. Hopefully that is real clear to everybody. Okay, now let's jump over back to column C and D and we'll get into a little bit more complicated statistic. There's uh, three of them there. There's profit factor, expectation, and the NetPix profit factor. Now if any of you have used any of the older NetPix, NetPix uh, trade logs, uh, they used a different formula for profit factor, but the standard industry formula that's documented in most of the trading books is the one in blue, uh, the profit factor 2.59. Okay, now profit factor, the official definition of profit factor is just the dollars one, which is up here in column B, divided by the negative of the dollars lost. In other words, that just turns that into a positive number. So profit factor would be just $117,000 divided by $45,000. That's the official definition of profit factor. NetPix takes that same number and multiplies it by another ratio of numbers of winners divided by number of losers. So it's just two ratios multiplied by each other. There's nothing wrong with the, using that number. The value, the real value of profit factor and the net profit factor are to be able to tr compare two different systems without regard to uh, the, the market or the uh, dollar value or anything like that. What you're looking at is a ratio of dollars won to dollars lost. You can compare two different systems that way. Whether you use the profit factor or the net picks profit factor, it doesn't matter. But if you're going to compare a system, make sure you use the same one to compare against. Okay. The last one that we're going to discuss right there is expectation. Now this is a little bit more complicated number, uh, and it ranges, uh, it can be below zero or above zero. The formula was discussed in an earlier tour that we did, the, I think it was the first video, and just to give you, tell you where that definition is, let's slide over to the tab, the very last tab called expectation down here on the bottom. So I'm going to click that. Right over here is in this blue box is the definition. So mathematical expectation provides a relationship between the ratio of dollars, average dollars won, average dollars lost, times the winning percent of trades. So it gives an understanding of that relationship. You can go ahead and read this information here on expectation. Remember from our conversation before, if you fall in the red zone, it's a negative expectation system. If you fall in the yellow zone, it's sort of a buffer zone. It's positive expectation. It's above zero, but there's not much room for it to move before it hits negative expectation. And if you're in the green zone, it's positive expectation above 0.5, which means it's reasonably robust and it's not quite as likely to fall into that red zone. Okay, I'm going to switch back over to the data. Provide another quick little point here. There's several numbers listed in blue. There's the percent winners, the profit factor, the expectation, and the average dollars won over average dollars lost. The reason those are those titles are highlighted in blue is because we call those our trade performance indicators. Those are what really tells us how good of a system, how robust, and how stable of a system we have. So we'll talk about more of that in a, a later video. But that's it with the summary statistics. TJ, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Uh, no, Barry, I think you covered it all. That, that was a very thorough explanation, and I think we should just move on to the next video.